Hey there, folks. I'm Matt Hansen. And I'm John Johnson. And you're listening to Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. The podcast where we discuss favorites we've reread, both classic and new comics we want to read, and everything else in between. And here's the comic we picked this week. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. Yeah. To- yeah, today we uh, we are, you might you might hear John. He sounds a little bit uh, under the weather. That's because he is. <laughs> and we're doing another uh, separate episode <laughs> through Zoom. So through if Zoom, the audio yeah. sounds different, that's why. Sorry about that, guys. I got the I got the vid again. But God, uh, John, weren't you being careful? I was being careful, but I but I'm on the mend. That's what matters. So yes, that's true. But luckily, uh, we have technology to you know continue this for y'all. Exactly. So this week we read the uh, newer comic that came out in America. At least uh, it's called Animal Castle, and this is I guess a sequel to Animal Farm. It actually is explicitly that. Uh, I found out as I was reading this about halfway through, they actually say like. On the farm, it was like this, and in the castle, it's like that. So I was like, okay, they're literally talking about Animal Farm. So uh, this is supposed to be a direct sequel to Animal Farm, the book by George Orwell. And uh, yeah, it's so it, 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 this is like a French comic, right, John? You researched yeah. it a little bit? Yeah, it's a, a French comic. The um, oh, This is by uh, Xavier Dor- Dorsum, and Felix Delip does the artwork. Um, all the art, the covers and everything, too. And uh, man... Yeah, it's it's good looking stuff, and uh, yeah. yeah. So so uh, he uh, Xavier has worked on a, a couple stuff before. Nothing I had read, but um, it um, but yeah. Apparently he's he's been pretty up and coming now for for a while. He's got some, he's got several words. Uh, I think he's got Eisner now too. Okay, cool. For this one or for something else? It might have been the one right before this one. This one. Oh, okay. Definitely his like new newest, but like it's it's getting yeah. It's like it's. A, yeah, it's getting popular, so. Right, yeah. Um, I did know, like, so So this came out from a Blaze Comics who, I read their Conan stuff, and uh, it's, it's not called Conan, it's called The Sumerian, which we did a comparison of Conan from America and Conan The Sumerian uh, yes. from A Blaze. And so what A Blaze does is they take already published works that are in, um, that are in Europe, and then they publish them in America. So it's kind of like they already know that they're hits over there or that they already know they're proven works. So then they can just print them over here and hopefully they hit over here as well. So I think Animal Castle was a pretty good hit for them. Um, it seemed to get a lot of uh, notice when it came out. And I didn't even know what it was. I just randomly read it and actually did a review of it uh, the week it came out just because it looked cool. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I really liked the first issue. Um, so, you know, if you want to check out that review, I think it was like, what, six months ago or eight months ago or something. It was on YouTube. But um it's still up there and <laughs> uh but yeah so like that's how i was aware of this that's i assume how you were aware of this as well john right yeah no i, I you you told me that about it you used to like oh check out this and you show me like the cover i was like oh that's cool and i you were telling me like you know again like at the time we didn't know it was a direct sequel to, to animal farm we're just like oh it's like supposed to be similar to animal farm and like the tag well i'm gonna say it now because like the tagline for this book or <clears throat> Excuse me, pardon me. The tagline for this was was that the uh, on the farm all animals were equal, but in the castle some are more equal than others. Yep. And uh, like, yeah, like just that alone. And then, like I said, yeah, then I you know listened to you you talk about the the first issue, and I was like, oh man, I'm sold on this idea. Like, when are we doing this? And yeah. Um, so yeah, it is, you know, it had to come out obviously a little more. So we waited on it, and uh, yeah. So now now we're able to finally dive into it, and. Um, yeah, I was really excited to read this one this week. Yeah, me too. I, I wanted to find out like how how good the series maintained, you know, its storyline and whatnot. So, uh, with that being said, let's dig into this thing. So it's it's a five issue series uh, that came out, and one thing I liked about this trade is there wasn't really like it didn't show the breaks in the issues. Like I didn't know where the breaks were. Um, there was only like one section that said like chapter two, <laughs> but that yeah. wasn't the second <laughs> issue. That was that was like seventy pages in or something. So. It was almost like because because in Europe they break uh, the they're sold as albums like they're almost record album size almost and um, they uh, they have like sixty pages usually in them so kind of like Fantastic Four full circle 
Okay. It's like that, where it's like that same size, where it's kind of the square, and it's about 60 pages. And so this was probably that. It was probably actually two issues in Europe or two albums big. So, um, but for America, they put them in 22 page chunks um, just to fit our format over here. And also, I don't know, did you notice the, uh, the, the like slightly different way of it being like the size of it in America or on the pages mm -hmm. because, because it's not formatted. Like they had to scale it down to format or to fit on our pages. To fit on, yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. tell sometimes every once in a while, but mainly in the dialogue, I actually, this is one of the few comics I had to read in uh what's that called panel view or whatever where you have to oh, zoom yeah. in on the panels Same. and uh and yeah because i like the, the words are just too tiny on like a, unless you have maybe one of those like magazine size tablets or something um but on my regular ipad i was like i can't i can't read these so so, so that that might be the only uh like caution there if you're gonna read it digitally um and it wasn't also like the scan transfer or whatever was not very precise for the uh, zoom ins so it was pretty blurry like when you zoomed in on the panels the words were like you know fuzzy or whatever so it wasn't yeah. the best experience that way but if you buy the you know graphic novel it should look pretty normal i would i would imagine so um but that's what happens when you bring stuff over from europe here it's going to get scaled down a little bit to fit into our our pages um but yeah so start off in the castle and we get a little preamble where they kind of say like, oh, like like you said, on the farm, everybody was equal, but in the uh, in the castle, some are more equal than others. And then we start off right away with like an execution, which <laughs> I was like, that's fitting. You know, we get we get a chicken named Adelaide who uh, was is being accused of keeping an egg from I get the government, I guess, or whatever you want to say, the dictator. Uh, yeah, uh, the central storehouse, you know, the that you're all working for. Um, and you're definitely not allowed to save anything uh, that you make or gather. You have to bring it all to the storehouse. Yeah, uh, even if it's your, because she's saying it's her own egg, but they're right. like, no, it's 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 the community's egg. How dare you? Exactly. The, exactly. Well, it's not technically a chicken yet. So until it's like a chicken, and then that chicken can work extra hard as well. So, <laughs> um, so that's like the. Uh, the beginning of this is pretty brutal, actually. Like, I thought, oh, they're just gonna like yell at the chicken, and then, no, they uh, they, these dogs massacre. So we should we should just kind of state the hierarchy. So in Animal Farm, the pigs were the highest, right at the end, and they walk on two feet in the end of that book, and they still walk on two feet in this one. But we find out that they were superseded by a bull that came in named uh, what's his name? Uh, uh Sil Silvio. Yeah. Yeah, Silvio. There you go. I was like, no, it starts with an S. Um, I almost said Ferdinand. <laughs> <laughs> he looks kind of like Ferdinand, so. Th that would be a very uh, unique yeah. crossover. <laughs> different, different book. Um, but yeah, so uh, so uh, Silvio is the head bull of, he's like the dictator, right? He's like the Stalin or whatever. And then uh, he has dogs that do all the like attacking and guarding and policing and all that stuff. Yeah, and then his militia. Yes, and the pigs are still in, they still live in the mansion with Silvio or like the main quarters of the castle but uh they are like his servants so they're allowed to like live in luxury but they're the servants of of him and then everybody else has to work in the fields and the forest gathering wood and and rocks and everything to repair um the castle and they kind of just they don't really talk about how the castle got made other than like humans used to be here then in some at some point it became a farm and at some point humans left completely and the animals took over the farm or took over the castle and made it a farm. So, um, and when they say farm, they just mean like everybody's gathering shit in there and like, <laughs> you know, bringing it in one storehouse. So, uh, then we're introduced to like the main characters after that chicken is murdered by the dogs, uh, in front of everybody. So like everybody, of course you got to have public executions so that, you know, everybody stays in place. They know what's going to happen to them. Right. Oh yeah. Um, and so we meet the main character. Her name is miss Bangalore. She is a cat. They call her Miss B for short, which we will call her from now on. Um, and, uh, you know, she's like just a normal white little alley cat, she calls herself. But, you know, just an average cat. She's got two kittens um, that she's, you know, trying to raise and keep keep from dying, basically, in this world. Yeah, the, um, fa the father died in some kind of tragic accident. We don't know much more than that. Yeah, we don't know. And then, uh, and then we get a goose that's kind of like the... Uh, the caretaker of the children, the, the kittens, uh, and her name is Daisy. And she kind of plays a big part in this because 
she's kind of at the beginning when this she, they watch this chicken die, she says like, um, you know, this is the like we'll all remember this day, and uh, and Miss B says, oh, the day Adelaide died, and the goose says, no, the last the, the day the the last day we did nothing. So like, there's already like uh, revolution or revol uh, revol uh, revolution ideas, I guess. Yeah. In in the the ether, you know, in some of these animals. Um, and apparently if they had a, you know, later they reveal that like Silvio came to free them from the pigs domination. So it seems like they already had a kind of revolution. So it's not like a foreign concept to them. Yeah. Um, it just, it just ended up being more of a, a, like a power overtaking another power instead of like, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. they were kind of tricked. They were like, Hey, he will work for us. And then when they got him in power, it, no, we're working for him still. So we're just working for a new guy. Hey, it's like that who song, you know, who's the new boss? Who's the new boss? Same as the old boss. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so then we see like what Mrs. B's day looks like. And uh, basically she just has to haul rocks, like big cut stones from a quarry all the way back to the castle. Cause they're trying to build an area or like repair a wing of the castle. So that um, Silvio's mate, I guess his, his, his lady cow, yeah, his concubines can give birth you know, when it's time, you know, in the, uh, whatever, spring or whatever it is, and uh, they'll have an area in the castle where they could be safe and, I guess, bear the children. So um, that's what they're all building towards, and that's why, on top of their normal chores of, like, you know, we need to have stores ready for the winter and things like that, you also have to, like, have cutting rocks, and we got to lay four rocks a day. And keep in mind, this is a cat that looks like she's maybe, like, 10 pounds, and she's got to haul a 20-pound rock and, like, drag it over the ground and stuff. So... Uh, we just see her kind of day to day, and like also we see the uh, control that the dogs have throughout that day over everybody. So you know they're pretty harsh with every. If someone's slacking, they call them out. Um, I like they that do. All of them oh, what were you gonna say? I was just saying I like that all of them have um, medals on, and I guess it's like it's partially like to show them having like some kind of authority and then also, but also it seems like a ranking of like the highest dog as far as like, you know, like he's the leader number one and, and the number yes. two, because we get a little bit. They of actually call them that. Yeah. They actually call them number one, number two, and they have funny names. I thought like that they, they give, they probably gave themselves these names, you know, the after like whoever famous people they thought were or famous animals or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, like uh, I can't remember what number number one's name is, but the, the, that was only one thing that kind of confused me while reading this, especially with the small type text. Sometimes it would say like N O like number and dot one. And I would think it'd say like, no exclamation mark. And I'm like, wait, no to what? Like, I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> and then really, Oh, it's number one. Like it would tri trip me up sometimes. Um, but we see like, um, th there's a lot of, especially in this first issue, there's a lot of uh, setting up of a very, um, traditional communist uh place like or like governments because um there's a lot of things that don't make sense that you have to do and you just do it because you're supposed to do it and you're gonna get in trouble if you don't do it for example uh miss b brings her last stone up and she needs to set it into the wall and the dog is like you have to set it into the wall right now but it's cut wrong and the dog's like i don't care like physics or reality will bend to what I want, you know, like, like you better get it in there basically. And it's like, it's just, you know, it doesn't work like that. There's a, an inch bigger than we thought it was or something, you know? So like, um, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know if you ever saw the movie or the series Chernobyl on HBO, John, I have but known. that had a lot of like this, like, uh, we must like, we can't actually like raise a signal of alarm because if we do, that will mean that we failed, and if we failed, that means that we're going to get in trouble uh, and, like, die or whatever. <laughs> so, like, we will just say everything's fine and, like, maybe you guys should leave in the city next door. or whatever. Like, you know, like, stuff like that. Like, it's a lot of, like, double think, and, like, uh, you're not allowed to really think for yourself. You're always looking um, to someone else to give you the order gotcha. because then they can be blamed and not you, you know, kind of thing. So um, that's kind of what's happening in this first scene where we see Miss B, like, I need to, I can't do this. They have to recut it. And the dog's like, no, I was told you have to put four bricks down today. And if you don't, like, I don't know what's going to happen, but you better fucking do it. Like, <laughs> like there's no option other than that. And if, if you don't, then it's like reality will end. It's kind of like, uh, just unreason is what it is, you know? <laughs> um, 
And so, uh, so yeah, it ends up the, the rock does fall from the wall. And that's kind of like the first confrontation. We see like how, like just the day-to-day from Mrs. B um, of her, her, her work day. And then we see her like day after work where she comes home uh, and they all live in like the barn area, right? That's, I think that's the main area that everybody yeah. kind of lives in. And, um, and we see one of the, there's some like strange characters in this for sure. Like, like there is a rabbit who's uh, a gigolo. I guess you call. I him, assume right? he's the only male rabbit. Yeah. That's yeah. So job. he, so his job is to just fuck all these ladies, lady rabbits, and uh, and they like they pay him for it. So he's really good at his job, and uh, they love him too. Like they'll fawn over him and help him out when they need and stuff. He's literally like, you know, the top top rabbit in town. What's his name? I don't remember his name off the top. Of my head. Uh, uh, Caesar or Cesar? Caesar. Yes. I, I su- he kind of looks. I assume they made him look like Caesar Romero or something like. Caesar Romero. <laughs> yeah. So that was funny. Um, you know, it it kind of reminded me him in particular. It made me also think, you know, because he does like some procuring and stuff a little bit as we learned throughout the comic, and so he kind of to me also came off as um uh what uh, Max Bialystok from uh um the producers. Oh, okay, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 like collecting things for a bunch of little old ladies, and like each one's like, "Oh yes, I love you, darling," and like, "Oh yes, I love you. Thank you so much for that carrot." Oh yes, you're the yeah. only one. <laughs> He's definitely a player, and then they yeah. also make sure that we know that those rabbits have mates because they say they have other mates later on. So he's not the oh, only male right. rabbit. Okay, so that's right. He's just he's just a gigolo that these ladies like to fuck. So it's kind of a weird character to like throw in there, but it's fun. Hey, hey, this is a French comic, right? And that's how you know it is. These these are normal things. You know, you could be a gigolo in France. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, exactly. Hey, different strokes, right? <laughs> but the so she well she judges him like as Miss B walks by him, she's like, that guy is a dirty, dirty slut rabbit basically, and uh, he kind of says something like. Uh, your kids are fine. Like, don't worry. And she's like, don't you ever talk to my kids? Like, I don't want you saying anything to my children because you're like a dirty, dirty sex rabbit. So, <laughs> yeah. I, she tells him that, like, can he like keep it down like in the evenings because like, yes. she wants to sleep. And yeah, we like, can all oh, hear you through to... the box. And he's like, oh, I have. You have to hear the sa- the sounds are like part of the the way I know I'm doing a good job or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like the ladies love it when I make them yell because there's a line out out of his box of of other rabbits. So. The more noise he's making, the more anticipation builds in the next rabbits, and the next lady custom. Oh my so, goodness gracious! Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty uh, interesting character, but um, we get you know like a nice little okay. This is where they live. They live in this little corner of the barn. Uh, Miss B and her kittens and the goose named Daisy. Um, and so uh, the goose, we find out that they use buttons for money, which is interesting. I don't. That was one thing I was like, I don't quite understand how their money works and like what they're paying for and. That kind of thing, but like, um, but somehow they they pay each other with buttons, and that is worth something. And then, but they like each person has kind of it's kind of like they're uh, they're indentured servants working for like company script instead of actual money, because all their money they don't get it. It's like collected, or they like there's an account with the government or with the the center, and you go to that center and say, I would like. A piece of wood and three eggs or whatever and they say well you only have four buttons so no and it's like it's, she doesn't hand them four buttons it's just there's an account of how much she's made kind of thing yeah. so um and then part of that she doesn't have enough food for rations tonight for the kittens so the goose who uh, miss daisy seems to have extra buttons so she goes with the kittens to help out with the uh the paying for the, the kittens to get food um and when they get there, we find out uh, basically there's there's either what is there no food or there's just like uh, they're they're cutting the rations. That's what it was, right? Yeah, they're cutting rations. Yeah, so like, oh, you can't get as much food as you wanted. Um, like, we have to save for the winter, and if we don't, uh, if we don't uh, like save up, then the wolves will all kill us, and that's why you need us and Silvo, great our great leader Silvo. He will protect us from the wolves. Now sing so the they, song about Silvo. <laughs> yeah, and so they all have to sing like "Glory to Silvo," like <laughs> like he's a great president or whatever. <laughs> like you know, it's, it, they have this song that they have to sing. It kind of it's very uh, patriotic. You know, they they there's some themes in this um, where they like okay, they're trying to be like it's nationalism that they're trying to instill in these animals 
for Silvo. Um, and the goose gets very angry that they're cutting rations. So the goose, Daisy, goes up there and says, you know, give us our fucking food, basically. Uh, and screw yourself, right? Screw your president and screw your band. Like, we're not singing this song anymore. And uh, Daisy basically starts a little riot. Like, all the other animals are very hungry, too. And so they start being like, yeah, we're with Daisy. And then she yeah, starts a mini riot. <laughs> what? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was just saying, yeah, like, why why can't we have, uh, why are you rationing the food that we pick so much? Like, you know, why do, you know, why are we yeah. by that? We have to pick it. Yeah, like, they, it's, I mean, this is, this happened in Ukraine and stuff where they would take yeah. all the grain from Ukraine and then, like, put it in stores and then be like, oh, no, that's not your grain. That's our grain. <laughs> and if you would like some grain, you can go to the, you know, government store and wait in line and then ask for some and if we have it for you we'll give you some but we probably won't so you know like yeah because you're ukrainian or whatever so like yeah this is you know this is like stuff that actually happened in real life but it's like a little metaphor we should also say that the art in this i mean we said how good we we like it you know but it's basically like a john bluth movie or something or like a you know like it kind of reminds me a lot of the um the uh what's that dizzy um robin hood the, the fox robin hood movie oh yeah that's a good that's that's perfect yeah, so I, I like that a lot. Um, it definitely has a cool feel. So when all this is going on, like the chickens being murdered and all that, like, yeah, it's just, uh, it, it looks like a children's cartoon, but there's like horrible violence. So that's what happens. A, a riot breaks out. The dogs attack. Of, they do give some warning barks at least, you know, but the, the people are very angry or the animals are very angry. So the the dogs just start murdering everybody. And even some of the dogs get murdered by a couple of the, the I guess they're goats or I think yeah they're. goat goats and sheep some of the yeah. bigger stocky animals yeah and so um and we're left with uh a bunch of animals dead and Daisy being like tacked to the uh, the door uh, with a stick and her whole like chest is ripped open and she's dead of course and there's a Daisy that's been stuck in her neck and it's like a warning to everybody like you fucking think you can just like say whatever you want and have a revolution well guess what you're gonna be dead just like daisy so that's one thing um that happens like daisy becomes the symbol of the revolution and what they do um of course they tell like uh, the dogs go and tell silvio hey there was like a little rev revolt but we stopped it but like there are people that died and stuff and silvio has to go make an appearance and say i people we must not do these things and you know, I, I love you. I'm doing this for you. I'm protecting you. You know, everything I do is for you because you need protection, you know? So um, that's why he's got to be a horrible dictator. And and we also see that in this castle, he has all the stores he needs for food. He has champagne that he drinks all day long. And, you know, it's like, where is he getting this stuff? But we definitely find out that he, like, we find out that all of the, the stuff that he has uh, is stuff that he trades with someone else for all the stuff that they collect. So all the animals collect the you know wood and eggs and stuff like that. And then Silvio trades it later on for the stuff he likes, like caviar and champagne and things like that. So yeah, a food looks like a yeah, dog food for, for his dog militia. Oh yeah. Fancy dog food for the, yeah, the dog militia. And that keeps them happy. Cause obviously you want your enforcers to be happy. Um, so that's kind of like how it goes for a while. Uh, Everybody's kind of upset about the re revolt that happened, um, but Silvio thinks he's quelled it, and uh, and, w and then he takes the stores, like I said, and he does actually sell it to a human, and we find out that the animals that were killed are actually sold to this human as meat. We don't know how the human, like, talks to this bull or anything. They don't explain any of that shit, but, like, um, this human has made a deal with Silvio, and every certain couple of months he comes and there's, like, eggs and meat and basically silvio will like anybody who's a dissenter will magically vanish and they'll say like oh they died of starvation or whatever and then and they, it turns and they out, bury them in the the they have a little like cemetery plot that they bury yeah. quote unquote the 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 poor souls uh, in and yes but it turns out that they're out. actually selling them to this human to eat so um yeah it's a very fucked up thing and the human's like how come they're like all mangled and shit? <laughs> but uh, I'll take them, whatever. So um, that's kind of uh, 
like we find that out and also like he gives the bull like some kind of agricultural like 4-h award or something like like a, a medal and the bull likes that so it's kind of a weird like okay whatever um, yeah like he look he, he always he, he i guess him look like one of those like dictators that give that have you know like the, the chest full of awards that just like how did this one person get all of these awards it's of course like, yeah they're all fake awards and everything um because so. it's yeah, so he just like you know again he has a he has a, there's a little like award around all of the dogs or whatever, but like yeah. he had the bull has the most awards and he has the most things around his name. And the fanciest it's, looking one, you know that pomp, the pomp and circumstance of, of it. You oh know, yeah, it is uh, is funny. Yes. Oh, just before we move on from this, I just wanted to say um, right before they go on this adventure, I thought I really in, like there is like an element of this is probably well not not adventure. It's when they're selling when, no, when they're, they're selling. selling I'm sorry. Yeah. The, um, sorry, but there's a um, this whole comic has a very um, you know adult themes running throughout it. Uh, in particular, this 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 one gave me a very HBO uh, comic. <laughs> like, I feel like this would be on HBO mainly because there's way more not the gratuitous, but very like there was a lot of animal sex in this way more than I anticipated. In oh particular, yeah, it was it was this. It was like. You know, it was like flipping the page and then being like, "What's going on?" And then realizing it was the 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 king having sex with one of his his uh, steer ladies, and then like, oh yeah, you know, so someone entering and he's like, "What well, what's going on?" You know, like how you know, you, you, you basically don't you knock or whatever. And I just thought yeah. it was funny. And um, it's like, that, like it's like he's just like, <laughs> and he, he was, like he's mounting her from behind, but you don't see like you know graphic or anything. But it's very like, oh, they're, oh my god, this is yeah, but you style. know it's. <laughs> Yeah. It looks like a child's movie. So, so, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. So it's just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So it's the funny to turn the page and see that kind of stuff. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was very shocking. And then also like the the rabbit, you know, the jiggle rabbit is always talking about his ladies and sexual stuff. So that was like an interesting thing too. Um, but the main thing that like happens that really um, starts everything for real. Like we already had the little mini revolts. But nothing really came of that. You know, all the, we could just tell the animals are not satisfied, right? But uh, out of nowhere, at, like part of the, uh, in the trade-off that the bull makes with the human, he brings a cart back, you know, of caviar and champagne and stuff. And on that cart is a little rat. And this rat is the sower or sower? Yeah, the uh, spreader of, of revolution ideas or whatever, right? But like a different kind of revolution. Um, this rat is basically Gandhi rat. <laughs> um he uh he when he gets to the farm and he start he does a play one night in the barn or not in the farm he when he gets to the castle he does uh, a play one night in the barn and he actually like has like a little gandhi like puppet that he talks about when he's like oh when i was in india there was a man a great man who defeated an empire by doing nothing and like just peacefully protesting and not uh fighting with you know weapons or fists or anything so um he tells this story and that's what sparks this whole revolution to start. Right. So um, at first in this first little section, the dogs actually see it. And I, I think, you know, he just did like a normal, like I'm, I'm coming to the farm. There's a show and people came, including dogs and the dog saw it. And I'm like, that is obviously like you're making fun of the King because there's like a puppet King that gets overthrown in the, in the play. And so, uh, the rat has to run away. There's a big chase scene. And eventually the dogs catch him. And I will say this. The rat is all peaceful and everything until he gets bit by a dog. And then he stabs the dog in the eye with his little walking stick. Or it's actually his Gandhi stick. It's like the head of Gandhi that's on like a pole. He stabs that pole into one of the dog's eyes. He's into number one's eyes. And so uh, he's willing to fight when he's, you know, cornered at least. But uh but for the rest of it, the rest of this book, he's preaching like nonviolence and all that stuff. So um, he ends up getting, he gets injured. Like I said, uh, the dogs think that he is drowned because they find his glasses on like a lily pad with some blood. But uh, he actually escapes with just like a broken, busted leg. And um, Miss uh, B finds him and takes him, him back to, uh, I guess it's like the attic of the barn is what I'm thinking. Yeah, there's like a, a spe kind of like a special way to get, to get into this attic area. They say, they say it's too small for like the dogs to get into this area. Yeah, there's like a plank that you have to walk across. It's all rickety, and so the dogs won't go on it. So and it's the only way in or out of this attic area. So they put the the rat. Is it, did I say rat or not? It's a rat, right? The, yeah, rat, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's so a they rat. put the Gandhi rat 
What's his name? Do they say his name? I don't remember. Yeah, what is his name? It is um Old Gray. That's right, they Al- call him Old Al- Gray. I think his name is Gold Gray Al- uh, Asler or As- Asler, but it, it's, okay. they call him Old Gray for the most of the, the comic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so the only people that know that this rat is alive at the moment is Miss B and her rabbit buddy um, that she's warming up to slowly because he keeps watching the kids for her now that the goose is dead. Um, and so her gigolo uh, bunny is like warming up to her, you know? And I was kind of interested. I'm like, are they going to have them have like a relationship or like, are, they, are we keeping this, you know, in the the genus or, or what are we doing here? Like, <laughs> because he's, they definitely get like friendly throughout this whole comic. Right. Like, yeah. Um, he's always watching the kids. The kids love him. Um, so yeah, but there's I, definitely. Yeah, I think so. But I, I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I, there isn't enough weird stuff in this that who knows. But uh, who knows? I don't well, all, so far, all the sex has just been between the same species. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So anyway, they keep this rat, old gray, up there, and the rat starts talking to them about like what they could do for revolution. You know, because uh, like Ms. B asked, like, was that story real? Was there really a man who fought? a king and was able to like overthrow him without any fighting or violence. And the rat tells her, yeah. And so he sets up a plan of like what they can do to start off and what they do. Um, they work their normal stuff. They're not trying to rock the boats at least during the day. And so no one is noticing them, but at night they go out and they banksy that shit. They, they put graffiti of a Daisy everywhere and, and Daisy, the goose ends up becoming the symbol of this kind of resistance. Um, so they draw like a daisy flower everywhere on like the rock walls and then like people find it. They're like, what the hell? And you know, this just shows like, you know, badness to the King. He's, you know, Silvio's like, don't like, how dare they do this? But they're also kind of, they don't have any retaliation in this, which I thought was kind of interesting. Like they're bound by their laws, which I was like, eh, eh, I guess like, I mean, well, it's partially not, and this is where we kind of see the 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 animals and like kind of like where their heads are, and as far as like I would say level of intelligence, and that's one thing I really liked about this is in particular the dogs. So you have the number one dog and the number two dog, as far as like you know the hierarchy of like um, you know the, the sheriff, or whatever. the sheriff, and the deputy or whatever. Yeah, and it's really interesting because like so the uh, king puts a lot of faith in his number one. And the number one is very much like the like they 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 toy with it and they show it a little bit each time a little more that he is like very much like an act first, not like a you know not street smart not uh not very wise just very much like act first you know round up people like I don't care like kill people if we have yeah, to yeah murder them stuff and you can yeah and then you can see that the number two dog is very much more like it, it, it's been he's been seeding this the, the whole time too is like. Like, you know, maybe that rat wasn't dead and maybe, you know, I feel like I could still smell him. Maybe we should do a little more hunting. And they're like, no, 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 he's dead. We saw his glasses. Um, and, yeah. and the number two is like, you know, he starts speaking up a little bit and, and we're, you know, we're getting a sense of like somebody, you know, they're definitely, like, somebody knows that there's something more going on and, but like, they don't want to like entertain or, or hear all those ideas yet because they're, they're like, oh, you know, we're, we're focused on, you know, we know how to run this. We've been running this. Right. So, yeah. And just one thing. Interesting. Yeah, one thing I like is, um, and this is kind of how it is, like, at, towards the end, like, uh, it turns out that while we say, like, oh, Silvio uses the dogs to, like, uh, or, like, the dogs are, like, do his dirty work, kind of, but he's aware that if he ever has to, like, get in the grace, the good graces of the other animals, all he has to do is be like, I didn't, I didn't kill anybody, that damn dog did, you know, like, so he's, he, it's like his blame. Like he can place the blame on these dogs. If anything ever gets at totally out of control, he says, look, I told him no, but that those dogs are mean, you know, they were biting me and stuff. You know, they could even like, he could just lie to the people and say they were out of control and it was this guy or whatever. So, um, it's interesting to see like how the hierarchy will move around. You know, he's able to place blame on these dogs and they're just following orders, which we've heard that before. But, uh, I will, I will say they made the dogs a little too sympathetic for me. In some points, uh, I was like, yeah, they're like literal like Gestapo murdering people and stuff. And like, I feel no sympathy to these animals whatsoever, even their children and wife, which they make sure that you see like one of them is like <laughs> has a kid. And they're like, like, dad, did you like round up anybody today? And like, 
I was like, yeah. Jesus, these are like like Holocaust camp guards or some shit. <laughs> and like the kids, you know, cut, the dads come home after a hard day at the camp, and they're like, the kids like, did they what they do today? You know, like like was anybody bad? Did you arrest them? Like like super fucked up. I thought, but like I don't know. They made them a little too sympathetic at the end of me for me at least. But and we also see one of the things that uh, happens for the. Oh wait, what were you gonna say? Oh no, no, I was just, I was gonna say, like, I, I, I think they, they see that in there just more, <clears throat> pardon me, just more to see about, um, be, because you know throughout this, it's, it's also, uh, B, Miss Beast kind of slowly getting like, um, not, not, um, not becoming, uh, what I mean, she's becoming a rebel, of course, because she's trying to gather people to cause, but again, this is all very much it's still like a pacifist cause, right? Yeah, um, it's pacifist. To, yeah, they're you know, like getting people to like come together to show solidarity together. So when they show the solidarity together, and they're doing it in front of the people in power, that showing them that even though that they are getting shit on, that they're not going to like it. It's not they're gonna gonna let it like bother them to their core. They're still gonna be able to be fine and be together. And well, that, not only that, uh, but that the dogs could join them. They will still be nice to the dogs if the dogs let them, you know, help them out or whatever. Like that's why I was like, I don't think. I mean, like. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> well, no, and that, I think that's what I, they, so they're trying to seed for that. But then I, I think they were, kind, I think it, at least to me, it felt like they were trying to show like maybe the dogs are redeemable, but then it seems like they're not because they do. By the end of it, yeah. Uh, it, as we get more towards the end, it really seems like even the one that she kind of like is able to talk to for a minute doesn't seem like he's going to come around ever. Like, I, and like, right. I, we'll, we'll get more, but like, I, I definitely want to keep reading on this. So. Right. So one of the things that they do, I guess, to like show how all the other animals are now kind of seeing the daisies around the castle every day and going like, oh, like there's something going on. We're kind of in this together. Uh, someone makes a fake like a, 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 a pinata, we'll say, of Silvo. It's like a bucket, but it's got Silvo's face on it. And it says like strike the bull, like choose your stick and hit the bull. And it's kind of like hidden in a back area. And this kind of shows like the animals at first are like scared too, and they're like, I can't, I can't hit the bull. But then they slowly come around as they see more and more daisies go up and the anger that uh, Silvio has towards them. Um, and so eventually there's just a line of, of these animals hitting this bucket, like showing how it's done kind of thing. And so uh, that's like the symbolism of them joining the cause essentially is uh, they're ready to take on Silvio with, with Miss B. And they actually let Miss B kind of lead them. Um, and then we cut to winter. Uh, like kind of, I guess we go from summer to winter, right? So um, there's no, I don't even say if it's autumn. Or is it, or is it start out in autumn, but it's already snowing. So I don't know if it's considered winter. But I, I, Yeah, I mean, it kind of, I don't know. It's The leaves were different colors kind of in general. Yeah, I guess at the beginning they were kind of different colors. So maybe it was late summer, early autumn, and then now it's winter. So Yeah. Cause she when she she does that one thing where she collects leaves and then paints on them the daisies to like right yeah 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 daisies everywhere yeah so that's like one of the way they spread the daisies around is they they put they paint them on leaves because the dogs are out you know scouting at night now because they're they're waiting for a graffiti person to uh, spray the daisy and then they know who to kill but uh, Mrs B paints daisies on all these leaves and then releases them from the top of a building so they can't like find out who did that but there's daisies everywhere on these leaves so that's one of the clever things. And then, um, yeah, so now we got, like, a force building, right, like, secretly in, in the shadows of this barn. Um, and all of them, they go through, like, a sh who do we elect as our leader kind of thing. And Miss B basically takes control where she's, like, she doesn't say I'm going to be your leader, but they all agree she should be the leader once she kind of gives her pacifist message of we're not going to do it by force. Uh, we're going to do it by not fighting. We're going to do our jobs well. We're going to collect all the wood that we need. Because so now that it's winter, they not only, I thought this was funny, this is very like double think or like yeah. what a government would do if they're doing this. But not only do they have to do their normal job of like, oh, I got to bring stones from the quarry to the wall. I also have to collect wood on my free time. And it's called free time because that wood is given to the government freely. So, you know, <laughs> so it's not like actually free time. It's just free time that you're giving the government, basically. <laughs> you're giving free time to the government. Yes, and then um, if you want wood for heat, you have to pay the government in buttons for that wood, for wood. Yep. For said wood. Yeah. So, and this is the only thing I wasn't sure exactly. This, this, so this, um, her message eventually is: we'll do our jobs, 
we'll get the wood, but we're not going to buy the wood back from them. So the idea was that they're going to sit in the cold and eventually they're going to suffer so much that uh, their work is going to suffer. Like the, they're not going to be able to be able to do as much work because they're sick from the freezing cold because they're not buying wood to stay warm. And that is going to affect the stores in the castle kind of thing. Um, and that's going to then affect Silvo and he's going to be like, why aren't they working? So I just thought this was interesting. I wasn't sure exactly like, so, but they still have all the wood, right? Like, like later on, they show the wood missing, like, oh, there's not a lot left, but I guess it's because there's enough sick of enough of them sick that the stores are used up because they're not replenishing them fast enough. Is that I, what I think that's what it's supposed to be is that the, the dogs and the cat and everybody in the castle are using the wood oh, okay. and, they're, and they're using it up a lot of it. And yeah. Yeah, and because they're not picking it up in their free time anymore, and they're not like adding to it because they're sick, that's why it's it goes up so quick. Right. Okay. So, um, but but the thing is, like, this is definitely taking its toll on the citizen animals, right? Like, like they are all freezing. They're having to um, stand in the cold or like sleep in the snow. And I was like, I mean, these animals would be fucking dead, like in real life or whatever. Like, yeah. like there ain't no way the like, house cat is just sitting in the freezing cold with the snow. But these are uh, these are normal animals. These are these are strong willed, uh, human esque sure. animals. On sure, and uh, so eventually, yeah, castle, yes, <laughs> yes. So eventually, uh, Silvo finds out like, okay, they're they're still like dancing and stuff at night to stay warm and stuff. So Silvo's like, hey, fuck that barn, burn that barn down. Then they'll then they won't have any shelter. Um, and so they do that. The dogs burn the barn down and they make it seem like we were just bringing you guys fire because we thought you were cold and a spark came out of nowhere and landed all over the hay. And so it lit the whole barn on fire. And uh, so they end up having to sleep in the burned down barn and it's still freezing. Uh, now they have no shelter, no cover over them. And we get like one of the saddest parts of the book, I would say, uh, where like there's the two goats and there's like a girl goat and a boy goat and they're like, they're mates. And the girl goat, decides like i'm gonna go pick a piece of firewood outside of when we're supposed to do it so she sneaks out to like get a secret piece of firewood and uh the dogs are waiting for this right they're waiting for someone to go outside of bounds because they they i don't and i don't know why this is because this isn't how it works in the real world but the the dogs are like holding the line for the law so like they, they can't do anything until they actually break a law so they're waiting for one of the animals to slip up and not just do their job. They're like, okay, so once this nanny goat goes to get a piece of wood outside of the time she's supposed to, they spring on her, and we get like this. This is what I was saying, like, with the dogs being, like, sympathetic. The main dog, dog number one, tells dog number two to bite the nanny goat. And the dog number two is like, well, I don't, what, like, why? You know, like, I don't know. There's, like, this thing. But those dogs killed so many animals before this with no remorse whatsoever. So I don't know. I guess it's maybe they're seeing the suffering and that's getting to them. I, I can only think that's what they're trying to get the point across. But I will see. I thought he was, I thought it was him as being the like smarter one is like, no, we like, we shouldn't just kill her. We should take her in and like put her on trial and like make a to do of it is what I, that's. The oh, I okay. Do. I took it to I mean like, no, we him should... as being the smarter but, dog. Oh, I thought they were showing like he's kind of feeling bad and merciful, and merciful is not murdering her here. Merciful is bringing her back, and she'll get like a slap on the wrist or something, or you know. But anyway, that goat gets bit on the leg and ends up dying. The cat Miss B tries to save her at night, but it doesn't work. And her husband, uh, or the the goat's husband, is very like upset, of course, because his mate's dead. Um, and this is like the little little seed or whatever that kind of. Uh, grows to the end of the book where right? like it plants a seed that will pay off at the end of the book um, on the last page. So that, that goat is very angry at these dogs and uh, but he can't really do anything. He's, he still follows the message. He even tries to like kill himself potentially like by walking off a cliff, but the cat stops him. Um, and then he just kind of, fine, I'll do what you want, you know, and we'll, we'll not, we'll be passive. God damn it. So uh, they all continue to be passive. Eventually the like, the dogs and Silvio come up with, okay, we have to, um, this is getting ridiculous. The wood's burning out. We need them to collect wood and everything, but they're all sick. So we have to, we have to give them wood, whatever's left in the stores of reserve, and then they can get better. And then, then we'll start doing more. So we will offer them, uh, like a, we'll, we'll give them a fake offer of like, bring us your leader and you can talk to Silvio and he will, 
negotiate like a cheaper cost for the wood because the animals want the wood for free. They're saying we're, we're working for it. We should get it for free. Um, and so Sylvia was like, no, we'll give it to you like half price, half price wood, right? The half two buttons wood. instead of four. Right? That's a good compromise. So the dogs end up, you know, they, one of the dogs, number two, like you said, he's the smart one. He's already figured out that the leader of this is Miss B. So he tells her like, you know, meet with us. You're the leader. We know it. We're not, or I'm not stupid at least. And, um, you know, meet with us and we'll, uh, negotiate. So she goes to meet with Sylvia. Your people are suffering. Do you want them to keep suffering? Right. And so the, I like this part where the pigs are like bringing her into his room and they're like, don't look at him. Don't stand up around him. Don't turn your back to him. And she's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then like, yeah, don't the turn second, your back to, th- I love that. <laughs> yeah. And then the second she walks in the room, she's like not sitting, she's looking straight at him. Like, and she's not, negotiating at all she's just like we want free wood and then he's like no and then she walks away and shows her ass to him basically so like nothing really gets solved but she's just like fuck you is the kind of what it is um and but like we are seeing this is paying this is costing not only the cows and the dogs and the bull in the castle like imagine they still have some stores like they're still using wood to make fires but it's just not as much as was before but the the animals that were you know fighting or in the resistance they are literally freezing to death and dying and there's problems. So um, we're at like, this is kind of like the pinnacle where I was like, I wasn't sure exactly what they were saying here, like what the message was, but the cat, Miss B is left with like the option of seeing her children die and freeze to death or buying some damn wood for half price. So the rabbit, the gigolo rabbit, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Cesar. Or Caesar. Says, yeah, Caesar. He's like, just buy some buttons. Is, is it worth it if they die kind of thing? And she's like, okay, like I'll do it because she's a mom. And so they take the button, or she takes the buttons, goes to like the little town center where you buy wood. And as she's about to buy a piece of wood, Silvio, Silvio's like uh, being talked to by his girlfriend just before this, and or his concubine or whatever. And she's like, why don't you go out there and give them what they want? Give them free wood, become the hero, right? And then also um, give them a, a scapegoat that you can use to say, like, it wasn't me. I am good, the nice ruler, Silvio. I gave too much power to these damn dogs. And number one is the one who was bad. He went behind my back and murdered a bunch of people in my name without me knowing kind of thing. And so uh, he does that. He comes out all nice right before she buys the wood. She come, He comes out all nice and, like, She's about to buy the wood, but he's he's like kind of interrupts it so he doesn't see her actually try to buy the wood. I don't think. And then he says, "Hey, everybody! Like, I it's me, your benevolent leader, Silvio. And guess what? I have decided you're right. All the wood is free, and this fucking dog right here is the reason. His asshole. <laughs> yeah, he he's the traitor. And Silvio actually stabs the dog, and the dog tries to say like, but. I was just following orders. You were the one who told me to do it. And Sylvia was like, silence. And then he stabs the dog with his horn and then like hits the dog into the crowd. And this oh. is the seed I was talking about with the goat. So the goat sees this, the, de- the, the, the husband goat that his nanny goat died earlier. And he ain't holding back. His anger has been festering and they see blood and they go for it. And I thought this was an interesting way to end this because Miss B is like, no, don't give into your baser, you know, violent urges. We're no better than them kind of thing. And those animals don't give a fuck. All of them. She is the only one. There's not even like her, her it's not even Caesar, who's been with her the whole time, can hold back the anger that they feel for this dog. And they tear this dog apart and murder him. And that's where we live. We leave it with that. Like, that was the winter. And uh, I was like, what? That's how it ends? But... John tells me that there's actually more issues coming out in France and they haven't yet translated it and brought it to America. So that's, uh, that's the ending of this book. It leaves it with that dog being killed and her kind of her message of peace being um, tainted. Kind of shattered. Yeah. Yeah. Shattered at the end. So um, John, what would you give it? What did you think? I love this. Uh, this is definitely my kind of my story. I already loved animal farm is one of my, uh, one of the books I really loved uh, when I was younger. Um <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, this was a really cool idea to, like, expand upon that. And um, whether, you know, whether I know they're saying, like, it's kind of like a direct sequel, basically. But either even if you just pick this up. Um, like yeah, you, you don't kinda, need to, you don't need to know Animal yeah, Farm to know this. So. Exactly. Um, 
so yeah, I but I like I was very in, in, engaged in the story. Um, I was in it the whole time. I like the character building in this. I like um, if it, it's very this to me is very Star Wars Re- Rebels like Rising. It is very um, like I said. It's got I had like kind of like some Game of Thronesy HBO, elements, but it also had um, it, it, it just the the. the this you know just this sweet mom that's just like going with her day by day and then kind of like trying you know trying to become a a leader in a peaceful way of like trying to overcome this this horrible dictator this horrible uh, object in front of them and then yeah like like you said building there to the to the end of this where yeah you know the the guy throws the the dog and it's like you know, oh, do with him what you will. You know, like I, you know, right. far be it for me to to deprive the people of their justice. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, it's just a pr- he's a fantastic villain in this, and I loved every bit of it. I love the art in this. Like you said, it's very much like animated, kind of like '90s, '80s, Don Bluthy, dark Disney, very like cutesy animals, and then like, oh shit, like what what just happened? Like <laughs> real stuff's going down. Part like it's it. it real stuff going down oh i will Um, say one one thing that was funny and one thing that was funny was when uh whenever sylvia was having sex or whenever he was about to have sex with his concubine he would say i'm coming and i was like is that just a translation error or like like not he wasn't in the act when he was doing it he would just be like like i'm gonna come have sex with you but he would just say i'm coming before he did that so i just thought that was funny i don't know (laughs) yeah i think i noticed that on one of them yeah yeah I, I I loved everything about this though, um, so much so that like it, like I said, I kind of went like I went to like look and I was like, is there more? Where where is this going? Like I need to re- keep reading on this. And I right. saw that that the so the yeah I guess the part three of the like I guess it would be the next um, album album yeah in France is done and out like you can actually read it now, but it's just not translated. It's uh and I like it's the Chateau de. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that in French exactly. I'm sure I butchered it. But uh, yeah, they they, fin- <laughs> they finished part three. It's like, uh, you know, there's a little, apparently there's a little more resistance stuff that goes on. And then uh, like as a show of like force, like some of those people get imprisoned. And that's all I know a little bit. And so like, I'm like, oh, hey, spoilers, I spoilers. <laughs> it's in the, it's in the description thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Like just the overall. That's all I know. Oh yeah. So no more than that. But I'm ready. I want them to do more. I'm probably as we post this, um, when we do, I will probably tag all of them. And be like, when are we getting getting more? Right. <laughs> um, and you want to send it to us and we'll review it because <laughs> I'm down with this story and uh, this has definitely been one of my favorites that we've read this year. So. <laughs> cool. So what do you give it? Uh, I'm gonna give this one a solid eight. Like this is definitely like I said, it's one of the, my favorites this year. It's super strong. Uh, intro engaging it caught me it wanted, made me want to read more i love the art um uh yeah i, I loved it this is fantastic awesome i thought that this uh was pretty like the story of it would have been better to me if if it wasn't so closely tied to animal farm the book like um because it was like literally a uh, a sequel it, like it said it was a sequel even in like the, with the pigs and all that stuff I was constantly judging it against the actual book Animal Farm and like what George Orwell wrote about, you know, things like the philosophical things that he was talking about in Animal Farm compared to the philosophical things that this author's doing with Animal Castle. So I personally would have liked if it was maybe like a spiritual successor instead of like, we're actually making this a direct like sequel to that. Um, Because I personally don't think so. Like, some of the things that George Orwell Orwell put in that book are very explicitly like anti-communism and things like that. And then in this book, there wasn't that as much. There was actually some like pro-communist stuff or at least like the uh, socialist side of it, I guess. But then it was like, but we want to, and we definitely want to interject that pacifism aspect into it. But I will say that they did, they did a lot with it where they like at the end when like, the dog gets murdered and everybody's like, yeah, fuck that dog. I was like, oh, I did not think that that's where they were going to go. Like, so I'd like to, if they're going to interject those kind of uh, other philosophies in it, I would have liked them to separate a little bit more from the original animal farm, but I did like what they did. Like, it wasn't like they were pushing their own agenda politics or whatever, or philosophies, but it was like that was in there. And then they were giving you like 
different things that you didn't think would show up because you thought they were like, oh, we're hardcore pacifist. And that is the message behind this book. But then like at the end of it, it's like, oh no, they like murder this dog. So it's like, oh, okay. Like it's going a different direction than I thought. So I liked that. I liked that there was, you know, uh, not just a full push of my philosophies or whatever from the author, but, um, and they like messed with uh, maybe not even what he thinks with some of those philosophies, even what the uh, the other animals are saying. And, you know, there, there were different points of view that I liked. Um, but I would have liked to see a little bit of bigger separation from the actual animal farm book. Um, just cause that was going in my mind the whole time. When, once you say like, this is Blade Runner two, now I'm comparing everything to Blade Runner, you know, like that, now I have this in my head. So, um, but if it was just like, oh, this is like a, like kind of like, uh, what is that? There's like, there's the Christmas story and then there's the summer story movie. I don't know if you ever saw the summer story with Charles Grodin as the dad and like the kids yeah. play with tops in the summer. Yeah, I'm, from, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, it's supposedly supposed okay. to be like the act, an actual sequel, but I mean, it is an actual sequel, but it's a spiritual sequel because they don't mention any of that shit from Christmas Story. It's just the same characters, and they, they have the same names, I think, but they don't like bring up anything from before. So, I would have kind of liked it like that, where it's like this is a separate thing, but it is loosely connected to those ideas, you know. Um, but other than that, like I thought this was a great book. The art is amazing. Like I think that's probably the most fantastic thing about this book is the art. Um, the writing, the story is like really engaging and you want to find out what happens next and like, where is this going? Um, because you're always, as you know, of course, as you're reading this, you're like, fuck that bull. And like, hopefully they, he gets overthrown. But then, you know, when she's like, it's going to be peaceful. I'm like, okay, how's this going to work? Like at any point, the bull could change the laws. Like that was, that was the only thing I found, like you kind of just have to go with the limitations they put on the castle itself, like the, the story, because like this whole this whole thing wouldn't work if it wasn't like we only have a certain amount of animals to work right so like like if if you had russia and 30 million people well it doesn't matter if 25,000 of them stop working they can go to a labor camp and the rest of them can work you know so like yeah. <laughs> like if you have an inf infinite supply of people it doesn't matter uh you know but this was like okay we're containing it to the animals in this castle so that's like one of the macguffins you kind of have to like okay i'm i'm going to accept that and then also like the concept of like the dogs and, and even Silvio going like the law says this. And it's like, yeah, but you make the laws. So like what they would do is just be like, it is now illegal to not get wood. It's not free time. It's you have to do it. And then they would you just arrest to, yeah. you if you didn't do it right or whatever, you know? So like they, they would just change the laws to make it illegal to do whatever. And then also there was like, um, it's very well known that like in these dict you know, authoritarian states, that like your neighbors are generally not your friends. So I kind of wish there was like a what? little bit more of, <laughs> of like uh, there are some other animals that are maybe shady. Like I thought they were going to go there because the nanny goat, I think at one time is like spying on them in the talking to the rat in the, uh, in the like attic where they were hiding him. And I thought, Oh shit, that goat's going to be like, bye, I'm going to spy on you. I'm going to tell on you. Right. You know, but like it did not, it ended up like joining them. And so, I was like, oh, it would have been better if there was like a little bit more like subterfuge going on from like their neighbors and stuff. And it wasn't all the animals that are like all together on this. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like this. This is a simplified story or simpler story than that. So I get why they did it. And it is I would say this is like a kid's story, except for like the sex stuff in it or whatever. So like like or like the horrible, horrifying oh, violence yeah. towards animal towards animals. But like, yeah, like. Um, it definitely has that feel where it could be like if you just tone those elements down, you could just make this into a kids movie or something. Um, but or you can just keep that violence in there and make it like Watership Down or some shit, like those violent <laughs> '80s children's movies. Are there four kids that but just screw yeah. them for life? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember the first time we saw Watership Down, I was like, oh my god, those rabbits are murdering each other. <laughs> like, this is the coolest movie ever. <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah, so. Um, I liked it. I think uh, I think there were parts I was like, eh, I kind of had to suspend disbelief just for the story's sake. But overall, I like this book a lot. And I think it's definitely one of the gems that came out this last year. Um, and out of nowhere from like an indie publisher too. And I, and I really like that this is a European book. I would love for more European stuff to get reprinted over here. Like all the Conan stuff that Ablaze prints is also European. Oh, nice. um, and so they, they just bring that over here and reprint it. And so I, I'm buying all that. Uh, also like Sarah Lone, and a couple other books that Sumerian Press is putting out is all now like from Europe as well. So like there's there's more European stuff coming over here getting reprinted for America. 
which I'm really liking because it's just a different thing than what's normally on the shelves. So, oh yeah, uh, and I, I was just gonna say I, I liked that. What was the Black Sad that we read? I remember that one. Was... Yeah, Black Sad. That's another one. Like that's getting reprinted over here in hardcover, but that's actually coming out in, like the album size. I kind of wish they would put these out in the album size like that they were, you know, in Europe. Um, but you know, beggars can't be choosy, right? I'll take what I can get. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna give this one. I, I'm gonna give it a solid seven. Like I enjoyed it. I kind of wish there was a little bit more less suspension of disbelief. You know, like I had to, I had to like just shut my mind off at points from, okay, we're just going with the story. Uh, and then also like a lot of that was because they were like, I was comparing it to animal farm, you know, number one. So, so like um, that's kind of just what they set me up for in my mind, at least like by, by saying it's a sequel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give it a seven. Now uh, this being Christmas month, you know, December, it's the holidays. We got some special stuff coming up for you guys. Um, we actually have, two christmas specials one is going to be released on christmas on the the regular main podcast for everybody and then the second one is going to be released only on patreon so we're going to get a patreon exclusive christmas special and a patreon exclusive uh just regular episode um full episode this month that's going to be white night because since john was sick this last weekend as well we released a different patreon which was fantastic for full circle so we're going to do batman white night this month for the Patreon exclusive main episode. And then we're going to also do a Christmas special that is going to be Lobo. Para, para, I think it's called Paramilitary Christmas Special, what it's called. It's like a one shot that came out in the 90s. So it's our first Lobo comic. So that's exciting. What do you think of that, John? I'm pretty stoked. And uh, I'm excited we're doing um, an extra special uh, holiday gift for the patrons. So not only if you sign up for Patreon, patreon.com forward slash plain trains and comic books, all one word. Not only are you getting our normal podcast you're getting the patreon exclusive podcast and as a holiday gift an extra holiday special lobo christmas from planes Trains, and comic books so definitely yeah yeah definitely want to check that out and patreon members exclusively get to vote on our second podcast of the month so our normal podcast that we do for everybody patrons get to pick that one as well and our list this our pay our patron picks this month is going to be the same kind of in that holiday-esque wintry vibe theme we've got some fun ones on there i think we've got uh, the last christmas brian posain um there's uh i know you mentioned a couple uh looking for them i know i wrote them yeah i got them one, one okay so i got we got so you like you said last christmas by brian posain we got krampus the shadow of saint nicholas by michael dottery or Do- dotry um Dottery, yeah. yeah and then uh we got klaus how santa claus began by grant morrison and then we got neil gaiman snow glass and apples uh, which is like a Snow White kind of book. So the other three are about Santa Claus, and this was just kind of like a winter one. Um, but yeah, all of these had good reviews, and I haven't read them, and you haven't read them. So wait, you've read Last Christmas, right? I, I, like, I, I will say this is the first list that I've read one, but I I have not read that one in like I, in 10 plus years. Okay. So I'm totally down to get into it again. I just remember it being crazy bloody and awesome and you know santa Claus and and, yeah. and brian posain so who i love his comedy and i've enjoyed the comics that i've read from him in the past so yeah so uh so yeah if you would like to vote on that episode and you thought one of these sounded cool uh go to patreon.com slash planes trains and comic books all one word and uh you will get to vote on that and then we will do that on the next in two weeks i guess right the next episode um and then we're i think we're doing the christmas episode releases on christmas week right yeah so we'll do the the main podcast will release, and we do that every two weeks, so the next one that you guys will be voting on will be our next podcast in two weeks, and then our patrons will get their special podcast, you know, end of the month, is like normal. Uh, yeah, going that's forward. the white night, yeah. And then our Christmas podcast, we will release the week of Christmas, probably just like a, a day or two before, but, you know, the, during that week. Yeah, like so Christmas you, Eve or something, yeah. Yeah, so, you, yeah, you guys have a chance to, to, to listen to it. Um, so, yeah, and the patrons... They'll get their email about that exclusively. So if you want to get that extra podcast, patreon.com. Check it out. Yep. And uh, and the one we're going to do for, I think we didn't say what we're oh, going to we do. Didn't say, the, main, yeah. the main Christmas special, the, the main podcast Christmas special, we're going to do uh, a Spider-Man book called Spider-Man Tangled Web Christmas Special. Um, and this is actually written by Darwin Cook, which we love, and art oh, yeah. by Jay Bone, who I love as well. So um, they complement each other very well. So that should be extra fun. I actually read this one last year because we were 
thinking about doing this one last year and I just had it and I was like, oh, I'll read it. And I loved it. So I can't wait for you to read that one and then we'll do the episode. And it's a very spider man Christmas. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with that being said, uh, if you guys would like to email us, you can email us at plain trains and comic books, all one word at gmail.com. And also check out our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And our YouTube channel where I do weekly reviews on new comics that come out. And uh, every now and then I'll review a trade as well. So, um, and then John every time, every now and then does some like movie reviews and things like that, show reviews. So uh, we're trying to keep that alive. And uh, also check out my Hellblazer podcast on Patreon if you like Hellblazer. I'm doing, I'm going through all the episodes uh, or all the issues, as I say, from issue one to 300 of the main Hell, Hellblazer series. We're currently on issue 47 this week. So uh, we're getting through it. And uh, also I got the Swamp Thing still going strong we're on issue 113 of Swamp Thing. We're more than halfway through volume two of Swamp Thing. So I'm excited. We're getting into those later issues of that run. And uh, and then after that, it's just quick, you know, there's only six volumes, right? So we're on volume two. We just got, you know, four more volumes after that. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing this till I'm like 90 years old. But it's worth it, damn it, because it's Swamp Thing. So um, with that being said, I think we will see you guys on the next one. On the next one. Bye.